listening to music these days feels like a roller coaster of emotions. You really get your money's worth with each song, experiencing a whirlwind of heartache and longing. But if Billie Eilish tells me anything in her lyrics, it's that there's a lot of people out there relating to the same story. I can honestly say that nothing compares to the the warm, comforting feeling of connecting with the song on an emotional level. And despite all the sadness that usually accompanies these songs, it would be a world without color if we only had upbeat songs playing one after the other. The beauty in it is completely undeniable. The beauty in longing like my longing to tour again after a two-year pandemic-induced hiatus, which, by the way, new tour dates have just been added. And if you're in Canada, the U.S., U.K., or Europe, check the website to see if I'm in your area. I would love to see you. Actually, I long to see you, which is what we're talking about today. Longing is the dearest of sentiments. It's that feeling when you want something you don't have. It's a powerful emotion that stirs your soul and motivates your mind to pursue whatever it is that you're missing. It drives you to reunite with what or who has stolen away a little piece of yourself. But as hard as it may be sometimes, longing can actually be a good thing. Scientific evidence suggests that time apart may strengthen feelings of fondness between two people, and it also can bolster the chances for forming meaningful connections. Longing allows us to step away from the moment, providing a safe distance for emotions to blossom in our memories and interactions. If we could never feel this sense of yearning, then how would we ever spark a flame between two hearts? Being away from the people that we love, it can make us feel a little lost, antsy, which isn't something to feel shameful or embarrassed about. Our minds are designed for human connection. So when we are separated from those dearest to us, our neural pathways light up and a desire arises in us to have them close, right? That moment, that moment when you finally reunite with someone that you treasure, that moment can give your brain an intense burst of satisfaction, producing an emotional cocktail that neurotransmitters helpfully mix up and serve in ample portions. It's like an open bar of emotions, somebody might say. So although it may feel like you're struggling right now, Distance can actually be the making of a beautiful reunion in the future. One worthy of a cheesy romantic comedy montage, I'm sure. Our emotional roller coaster on the quest for our deepest desires can be a tumultuous experience. On one hand, it can fill us with excitement and inspiration, motivating us to make those dreams come true. On the other hand, It can be frustrating when those dreams remain just that, dreamlike fantasies. So, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged if you're feeling a little bit disillusioned or unsatisfied by your longing. Remember that it means that somebody out there or something out there lights a spark in you. And this is great, that spark. We all want to feel wanted. You being a spark in someone else's heart, it's exciting. It's allowing yourself to feel longed for is an affirmation that you are worthy of devotion, you're worthy of desire, and well, that's something I think we all deserve. It's definitely something that we all want. But what about when longing turns to loathing? When something or so one is right at your fingertips, and yet, in reality, is worlds away. Suddenly, what was once coveted seems unbearable, unachievable. All of its glittering promise has, poof, disappeared in an instant. 
leaving behind a handful of what could have been. Then what? Then what? Well, let's find out. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's comment down in three, two, one. Longing can take many forms. You might be longing for a lost love, or pining after a life that you thought you should have had, or dreaming for a future you've always imagined. It can have a way of taking over our thoughts, and before we know it, the thing that we once longed for so desperately is no longer something that brings us joy. Instead, it may feel like an impressive weight. It's not unusual to find ourselves in this situation. Suddenly, what we once aspired to believe has become more of a burden. First of all, this happens. Longing is a part of life, and disappointments even more so. But one of the most important things to do when facing this scenario is to think critically about what it is you wanted in the first place. Reflect on that for just a second. Step back and think about why you wanted this in the first place. This can help you when times are tough and you want to give up. Is this thing really helping your life or... Is it time to stop chasing and make some changes? If you find yourself heading down a path of frustration, take action to either appreciate the situation or reject it. I'm going to say that again. If you find yourself heading down a path of frustration, which happens to all of us, take action to either appreciate the situation or reject it. Strive for advancement, or be content with what is. Rather than allowing yourself to become enemies with someone, choose a more proactive solution. Longing can be a powerful driving force in our lives when we use it productively. So how do you distinguish between longing and simply wanting something? Well, good question. Let me show you. First, check your emotional state. Ask yourself if your longing, your desire, is it rooted in your emotions? Does this feeling have deep purpose or meaning behind it? If the answer is yes, then you are truly longing for something and it could be a sign of a higher purpose in your life. But on the other hand, if you're just wanting something because it looks good or it's trendy, if there isn't an emotional connection behind it, then it may not be true longing, but just a passing fancy. This could be a sign that you are simply striving for material things that really don't possess a greater purpose. Plus, longing can often be tied to feeling nostalgic or compassionate. Feeling something nostalgic or romantic about the past and wanting to reconnect with it in some way. This can be an especially powerful thing if the object of your longing is something that can never be regained. This feeling, this feeling may also come with a a sense of sadness, a sense of loss. But in many cases, it can be comforting as well. There's something really special about being able to feel a connection with the past and cherishing those memories however we can. If you are feeling a deep longing for something, take the time to appreciate those feelings. Take the time to see what comes of them. Perhaps there's something you can do to reconnect with those memories or make peace with whatever it was that has been lost. Allow yourself to be gentle. Be compassionate with your emotions. They're just as important as any tangible thing in life. Give yourself some time. Give yourself some grace. Because at times, longing can also be a desire to make things better in your life. This might mean wanting to be a better person or making a positive change. And when you feel this way, It can be a chance to think about things that are important to you. You can reflect on what really matters most to you, what motivates you, and 
It's important to be aware of your feelings and to understand why they exist. In doing this, you can discover the real purpose behind your longing and use it to move forward in life. Ultimately, allow your longing to better yourself and make meaningful changes in your life. It can be an effective driving force if you let it. So make sure that the things you are truly longing for have a purpose and that in your life that you are using them to drive you forward. Use it wisely and make something beautiful with it. Second, chances are that when you long for something, it will propel you out of your comfort zone. Now, this requires extra effort from you to pursue what it is that you are yearning for. So if you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, that's usually an indicator. There's something deeper beneath the surface. Longing for something can be an opportunity to reach beyond what we think we're capable of achieving. We may not know what the end result will be, but perhaps it's an invitation to explore new possibilities, new chances, new opportunities. And when we make that leap of faith into the unknown territory, we're often met with fear and doubt along the way. So remember, your comfort zone, it's a safe place. Sometimes you have to take risk if you want to find your true fulfillment in life. It's important to recognize that taking risk can be scary and intimidating, but it's also an opportunity for growth, for discovery. Believe in yourself. Step out of your comfort zone and trust in the process. One last thing. And this is actually pretty important, so lean in just a bit. When something has come to fruition, the goal or the dream behind the longing has finally been reached. And when this is recognized, right, it's important to recognize this. When a longing has been fulfilled, when you actually get there, when you arrive, when it's in your hand and no longer just at your fingertips, take the time to reflect on what you have achieved no matter how small, no matter how insignificant it may seem, this will make you feel more confident and help you successfully close this chapter of your life, which then in turn makes you excited for the next goals, the next ambitions, the, hmm, what's next for me to go after? All people feel longing. It's a fundamental emotion that drives us to strive for more and motivates our ambition. Constantly in search of something better, longing is what keeps us going, even when times are dark or we're feeling lost. So the next time you feel yourself stuck on your journey forward, take solace in knowing that your desire to keep striving onwards is a sign of life itself. I'm going to say that again, because I love that. Take solace in knowing that your desire to keep striving onwards, it's a sign of life itself. And don't forget to take the time to appreciate what you already have. It's only when we can be content with ourselves in the present moment that our longing can truly grow and direct us towards a brighter future. Have faith in yourself. Take a deep breath and allow your longing to carry you towards the future you seek. To find more episodes of Comet Down, or to see concert dates where I may be performing in your area, or to simply know where to send some chocolate chip cookies, visit CometDownPodcast.com. This podcast was produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. Now something my attorney would like for me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and not intended to, nor should they, serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician 
should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should act only upon the advice of this physician. Now, what I would like to say, I'm an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or a physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcast episodes to aid those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit commandownpodcast.com. And then finally, to help keep this podcast continuing each week and without ads, would you please consider pitching in 2 or $3 dollars a month. Your 2 or $3 dollars a month will go a long way in supporting the time, the additional people, and content that you hear each week. If you would, please visit commentdownpodcast.com, look for the white coffee cup with a cute little red heart in the center, or you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page to find a QR code that will take you there directly. Again, just 2 or $3 a month would be amazing. Thank you. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind. And join me next week as we calm it down.